Hey Revengers, it's Chris Bankin from Revenge Performance. Uh, today we're going to do a turbocharger unboxing video. Uh, before we do that, and you learn what turbochargers we're running this year, uh, let's show you what we were running last year. So last year we ran a set of Garrett uh, 2867 GTX Generation 2, two turbochargers. Um, we ran these last year with the baby 0.48 T3 exhaust housing. Uh, this is a 5 bolt exit and a T3 inlet. Uh, this fit our uh, header kit on our car. Um, we were planning this year to run this 0.63 uh, exhaust housing uh, AR, which is quite a bit bigger. You can kind of see some of the differences here. Uh, this will flow about 20% more turbine flow, and so it'll make some more power, especially in the top end of the RPM range. Uh, with our 3.4 liter stroker motor, these 0.48 2867s really spool very quickly. We could make 20 PSI by like 3300 RPM. They were really an incredible fast flowing turbo. The car really felt like it had a big set of TD04, which is the stock frame for the 3000 GT and Dodge Stealth uh, type of turbochargers on it. So it was a blast to drive around. Uh, really, you could drive real lazy and it would still make a lot of power. And uh, the car was making somewhere around 575, 580 uh, wheel horsepower. Um, we ran an 1120 uh, at 127.3 at Rocky Mountain Race Week last year uh, with completely street setup. The car weighed almost 4,000 pounds with me in it. Uh, we had Nido Neogen all season tires on it. It was definitely not a race car. And uh, we did real well, only running 25 pounds of boost. And so this turbo has been great for us. Um, if we hadn't made the transmission decision we made this year, we would run this again with the 0.63 housing and see if we could get a little more top end. Uh, and take a little bit of uh, stress off the engine because when you want to run a really tight exhaust housing like this, it does put a little more stress on your components and uh, things like that. Um, so we think going to this 0.63, we probably would have lost five or 600 RPM of response, which really wouldn't have made a lot of difference because the car was really starting to boogie at 3,500, 4,000 RPM anyway. And so losing that a little bit would have made very little difference. Uh, it still would have been a lot of fun to drive with the manual and we would have had no problems with respool. Uh, we've bogged the car to 2200 RPM on launch before and seen it still recover to 16, 17 PSI almost instantly. So it's really, really a great setup. Um, I think on a 3.0, you may consider this 0.48 housing, uh, depending on your goals. Uh, if you want a really fast spooling 600 wheel car or the Garrett type of frame, I think that's a good option. Uh, if you're wanting to make 700 plus, then you probably want to go to this 0.63. So big news this year, you've seen a few of our posts on Instagram and whatnot. Uh, we are switching to an automatic. Uh, we're going to use the JDM automatic transmission that came in the non-turbo uh, cars abroad. And uh, we have a lot of upgrades for that. So if you check out our Instagram and Facebook, we're going to show kind of what we did with that. We're going to be putting together some builds. Uh, blog posts and things like that kind of showing as we take that transmission apart put the upgrades in it um, But we're really excited about that What really? Prompts us going to a bigger turbocharger is we really want to run nines this year And so that's a big jump down obviously from 1124 um, I do believe with a little more boost the car would have run 1090s type of thing uh, as it was last year, but obviously that's fence racing. I don't do that uh, so Let's say we got about a second and a quarter to make up. We're going to enter Rocky Mountain Race Week in the 10.0 class and see how many 10.0s we can get. Or if we can get a 10.0 or a 10.1 every day, that would be awesome. And then hopefully sometime this year, we're still going to edge into the nines and things like that. We have a roll cage and other items for safety to put in before we do that, but it's all on the plan. So the thing about the automatics is turbocharger response is no longer quite as cut and dry because you can put a high stall torque converter in them and so we have a precision 8 bolt built torque converter um, that is designed to stall about 4200 rpm and obviously uh, depending on engine torque uh, depending on how much boost you're running all that's going to change we just really wanted a setup that we could foot brake without nitrous and get the car off the line and if it ends up Spooling way higher than that, you know, if, if we're, you know, over 6,500 the whole way down the track, we may tighten up the converter a little bit, but Precision offers a uh, free restall in the first two years. 
And so we may have to do that, but that is really just kind of part of the game. There's no problem with needing to do that. As you know, at Revenge Performance, we love to test the things that we sell. And so we will be offering some precision torque converters on our site, uh, notably the second generation one from Mitsubishi. Uh, the 1G1 is exclusive to Jeff Bush because he developed that. Um, so we're gonna test this converter out. We're gonna get a lot of data for it. It's all gonna be completely transparent. Uh, we are not gonna hide what it stalls at or what it does like that. Um, we're gonna give you data logs, see exactly what it does on our exact combination. And that might help you get closer to what stall you want in the future. And uh, you'll be right along for the ride just as well as we are. Um, you know, we're not in a super competitive racing environment uh, where we feel like we can't give all that information out. And so we just want everybody to learn together. But back to the automatic and the high stall torque converter. What that means is that these 2867s, that they spool, start spooling at 3000 RPM, doesn't matter anymore. And so unless you're at really low throttle opening angles, uh, as soon as you really start getting into it, your high stall torque converter is gonna really you know, get on the converter. It's gonna stall right past where you would have any kind of lag with a larger turbo. And so there's not a good reason anymore, in our opinion at least, for a drag racing vehicle to run a turbo this small on our stroker setup. And so we are upgrading. Uh, rather than just doing this exhaust housing, we decided to upgrade the entire turbocharger. And that's why we come to this video today. We are gonna go ahead and unbox this turbo. Um, we did not go to the moon with this turbocharger, uh, just because we don't have a ton of racing experience with the auto. We're gonna see what this does. But also, these are capable of so much power that we really didn't see the need to go too much bigger on this. We're not trying to run 150 in a quarter mile or anything like that. Um, we're really trying to just build 990, 135, 140 type of car, uh, something that we can consider fully streetable, and I think that that would be a pretty good uh, achievement for this platform and what we're trying to do. So what we went with is GTX 3071R Generation 2, and the really nice thing about that is because of the options we picked, this is completely interchangeable. Uh, you know, externally with our current turbo setup. So we won't have to make any changes to the headers, we won't have to make any changes to any of our plumbing or anything at all. And that is the nice thing, once you make the investment in a T3 or a TD05 header kit, um, you really open up the doors to being able to easily swap to off the shelf turbochargers. Um, we can get you one of these turbochargers in a couple days. And so in a racing environment, that's really important. Um, that you try to use standardized components when possible and uh, you know not necessarily be held up you know working with a lot of custom type things so there's a couple of options on these turbos that we're going to talk about when we get this box open uh, that are important to fitment on a 3000 GT or Dodge stuff so let's dive in so whenever you order a turbocharger from us um, when you select the options you want for your compressor housing and you select the options you want for your exhaust housing, um, these are going to come in one box like that. And there's a couple other things to talk about. We'll have this on our product data sheets. So a couple other parts you need, but as long as you order the correct assembly, you're basically going to get a turbo that's ready to bolt on. So we'll get this out of the box. zip tie. You really shouldn't cut these with knives, but I do have it away from me. So I think we'll be okay. A little anecdote, my wife actually got nine stitches. Uh, she using scissors to try to cut a zip tie. Right? So if you got wire cutters in the Annie, that's the safe way to go. So once we get this turbo out, you can see here the GTX 3071 externally, although these turbochargers are clocked differently right now, which simply means these backing plate bolts have been loosened and the compressor housing's been rotated. Um, you can see here externally, extremely similar. Uh, you'll notice both of these turbos have compact compressor housings. This is a T04B, this is also a T04B. 
That is not the native housing for a GTX 3071R. This is an optional housing and one that we recommend for this platform because this is a lot more compact than the TO4E that the GTX 3071R natively comes with. Um, you do give up your surge ring. As you can see here, there's simply not room for it with the larger compressor wheel. Um, but this is gonna fit in your engine bay just like this one. So I can tell you from experience, this is pretty close to the firewall when you're installing the engine. Uh, at least if you're putting the engine in with the transmission at the same time. Um, I can also tell you this gets pretty close to your valve cover. We did have to run a spacer on the rear header to even clear that. Uh, and so I have heard of people getting a TO4E compressor housing fit uh, in our engine bays, but I didn't want to have to deal with it. And so you're not really giving up much by going with the compact housing uh, because at these flow rates and things like that, within, we're within the capabilities of what this housing can handle. Uh, this has your same three inch inlet the 2867 has and it also has the two inch outlet and so this is going to fit with our existing intercooler setup everything like that's going to be fine all of your fittings and things here your coolant and oil fittings are exactly the same so there won't be a problem there our t3 inlet is exactly the same and you should be able to see here how much bigger our turbine wheel is you see, this is our GT28 wheel, and this is our GT30 wheel. Uh, traditionally, the GT30 wheel has been thought of as being pretty laggy uh, with only a three liter, 1.5 liters per bank powering it. Uh, with our stroker, which you know basically 1.7 liters per bank, um, that's gonna help. Um, also, as I mentioned earlier, with the high stall torque converter, we should be getting right into the meat of this turbo as soon as it gets off the, uh, basically on the launch. And so it should stall right past where this would kind of be sluggish on a manual type of setup. So, but again, like always, we are going to share any data we have on these turbos with you and data logs, however detailed that you guys ask for it. Nothing hidden, hidden here. Uh, we want to show how these spool on a, a 3S engine and uh, kind of see, you know, maybe with this generation two technology, improved uh, billet aerodynamics on the compressor wheels. Maybe this is gonna work a lot better than the older GT3071s did on our engine. Um, we have mapped out the compressor maps and demand lines and they look pretty good. So we're just gonna have to try it. And so we looked a long time for 2867 versus 3071s and there's not a lot of direct evidence out there about how they perform against each other and so when we find there's not a lot of direct evidence for things, we want to make it. That's just the facts. Uh, and so when possible, we're going to test things and be as scientific as possible. And I know we've changed a lot between these two setups. But we're going to do what we can to show the comparisons between them. Revenge Performance can offer any and all Garrett parts, uh, including some custom parts as uh, we would get from ATP Turbo. Um, they cast uh, some of these turbine housings and things like that for different custom platforms and uh, turbo kits for popular platforms like the Focus and the Fiestas and other things like that. And so we can offer any Garrett turbocharger you need. Uh, we're going to try to get more and more of these on the website, but if you see a model that you'd like and it's not available on our site, just reach out to us with our phone number or sales at ourvengeperformance.com. Um, we're also going to kind of show the recommended options, at least for the 3000 GT and Dodge Stealth platform as far as what compressor housing to pick and what turbine housing to pick. There are tons. And so how many bolts you got, whether it's V-band or not, AR, all that stuff is configurable. And so that is another nice thing about running Garrett or other type of turbochargers out there that are based on a standard platform is there's a lot of mix and match stuff you can try. So let's say we get out there and we find out these aren't laggy at all. We want to make more power. We can go up to a 0.86 T3 housing. I don't expect that. That's something you can do. The uh, same thing with what we did with the 2867s. We found the 0.48s, spool exceptional, probably too good. On a three liter, probably would have been perfect. On our stroker, we would have went to this 0.63, which we were gonna test next. So just a lot of great options out there and a lot of configurability. And if you have any questions about Garrett turbochargers, feel free to reach out with us. Uh, we'll tell you what we have, we'll give you the data we have. 
um, or we will talk with our Garrett technical line and figure out what we don't know. So thanks for checking out this unboxing video. Um, we're going to try to start putting these out again and we're hoping that uh, these are useful to you guys. I know that you know, there's a lot of videos and a lot of channels you can choose to watch on YouTube. So if you like what we're doing, please subscribe. Um, please uh, ring the bell. Uh, please comment. You know, honestly, uh, that really helps us out and helps us know that you guys are interested and uh, maybe we get an opportunity to answer some questions for you or maybe we get an opportunity to learn something too. So obviously, you guys are smart out there and we'd love to hear from you. Thanks a lot.